Hi, welcome to the Barry Nation podcast, where we support the bariatric community with humor, humility, and honesty. I'm April. I'm Jason. And I'm Natalie. We are so excited to be joining you guys tonight. We have amazing conversations, but when the three of us get together, we really tend to like, hmm, we go pretty deep. Uh, if you are watching this in the month of May of 2022, uh, we are shifting our support focus. And really in May, we're focusing about, okay, we, we've made it through the showers, right? How do we kind of blossom? How do we bloom? How do we step into our own story, our own light? And if we feel like we're ready, how do we share that story with the world? So our conversation today is really going to be about exactly that. How do we begin this process of even understanding and acknowledging our why and our story for ourselves? And then if we feel so compelled, how can we start sharing our story with the greater world, with the public? Um, obviously, all three of us <laughs> share our stories very publicly, uh, but even we've struggled with understanding how we were going to do that or being okay with sharing our stories publicly because we all know it's it's difficult to it's difficult to share the bad with the good right we think that we've done something wrong we maybe want to like step away and all three of us have had i think a moment in our bariatric journey where we have pulled back right from the community and from our own story uh it didn't work out well for us which is why we continue to return to and, and be such an active piece of the community but yeah, right. There, it takes some, takes some time to get there. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys are good with it, I say let's just dive in. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. So, first things first. Why did we decide to start sharing our stories publicly? Do you guys remember? I I know for myself, I started sharing publicly for two reasons. Uh, the first one, which was the one that I told myself was the only reason <laughs> was that I wanted accountability. Uh, I started it during my pre-op process of my third bariatric surgery. Um, <clears throat> and it was a very rigorous, uh, three month long pre-op process. And I just wanted to use it as like a journal and keep myself accountable. Like if I put it out there, it's out there and I have to follow up on it. And that was my, my thought process. Um, but I think the second reason that was underlying was that I really was looking for support and a community to help me along my journey. And I don't think I realized it at the time. Uh, but when I heard you ask that question, both of those reasons came up. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, what about you? I know for me, mine really came super early because, you know, as I've told the story before, it took me a long time to find somebody that looked like me to where I would even know if the surgery was going to work for me. Like I saw so many amazing ladies that had great success and that's fantastic. I, you know, I'm a big proponent, cheer you on all day long. That's awesome. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody that, you know, is my size, my makeup, my whatever is going to, is going to work. So I knew that if it took me that long to find it, that there's got to be other people out there that feel the same way that I did. And so not even really knowing anything about Instagram when I started it, started my process, you know, pre-op, I, I got familiar with it real quick, just based on the fact that I knew I didn't want to be just another person that perpetuated the fact that people can't find people. And I know that men are very, we just don't speak out about it a lot because we're, you know, we're taught to just, you know, suck it up, keep it moving and don't talk about, you know, any problems you're having because nobody wants to hear it. Just keep it on, you know, moving on down the road. So for me, I knew that it was important for me to be, to, to kind of help break that cycle in some way. So I wanted to get as vocal about it as possible and I know that I not only talked about it with inside my family and friend circle, but I talked about it at work. I talked about like I was very open about it. And just luckily, I never met any detractors ahead of time because like even my boss at work is heavy. You know, he, he's a pretty heavy guy. He said the same thing. He's like, I've always thought about it. I've always wondered. So I hope it works out well for you. Maybe you'll inspire me one day. Like, so, I mean, like everywhere I turned, it just kind of so happened that it worked out that way. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. luckily for me. Yeah. You know, and I think I, I, I was born a teacher. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. It's the only thing that I've been passionate about doing. And my teacher brain kicked in after surgery. And it was like, I wonder what's out there in terms of support, because I was really struggling. And then as I was learning Instagram and watching other people's story and learning about him, I was like, oh, I, I feel the same way. Or, oh, I did this when I ran into that issue. Or like, oh, I wonder if somebody has some ideas for me. So, you know, I was compelled to start sharing from, I think that that teacher brain in me was like, maybe I have something that somebody else needs, but I also know that I rely on my colleagues to improve my own teaching practice, which means I need to seek out other people. So it was kind of like this, you know, this symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just didn't want to feel alone, right? The pandemic had happened. I was terrified I was doing something wrong. Was I screwing it up? Eh, right. And you just want to find other people that get it. And the powerful thing about, especially the Instagram community, well, and really any, any community, right, is that you can be a, a part of the community without putting out anything publicly, right? You can be in the background, you can be observing, you can be watching, you can be commenting, you can be sending direct messages, but you forward facing, you don't have to put anything out there. Mm -mm. No. Right? And, and you benefit from, from the community. Right. But really the step even before that, right. Of like deciding, like, I'm going to share my story is we had to get right with our story ourselves. And what I've really started to understand is that you don't have to understand your full story. You don't have to know every single why to make the commitment to have bariatric surgery. Yeah. You just need little pieces of it. And your story is going to unfold the further you get out from surgery that's just what's going to happen. You're going to rediscover, you're going to understand, right? Different lens, different, right? Time, all that kind of stuff. But you do need to have that initial moment where you're like, no, this is why I'm making the decision to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. That moment. Do you guys remember what that moment was? What was, what was that, the, the, the switch that happened that you were like, no, this is my why. And there's no going back from this. Mine was my doctor. Uh, my doctor telling me, you know, basically let me know that I was actively dying. And if I wanted to change that, there was an option. And knowing the fact that, you know, I, my family and I just had grandkids and grand, you know, granddaughters that I wanted to, I wanted to see more of, like my kids were older. My kids were, you know, almost graduated or both my girls had graduated and my son was really close to graduating at the time. So I had made it to the end of, of kind of those types of things, but still haven't seen my daughters get married. I knew my son was going to eventually get married and the grandbabies. I wanted to be around for all of that. So I knew that I had to make changes now or I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nat, what about you? Do you remember? Yeah, mine was um, after my grandma had passed away and uh, I was um, sorting through just boxes and boxes of pictures I have a photo or a video of just the living room full of boxes of pictures from my grandma's life and I was sitting at unknowingly because I didn't weigh myself I was sitting at 400 pounds uh feeling unhealthy um and wanted a life for myself that was similar to my grandma's she'd gone to Italy Holland, New York, you know, all over the world. Um, she outwalked a 30 year old in Mexico at 70. Like she was just always active. Um, and I realized I can't do that <clears throat> in the, you know, the way that I'm living right now. Um, and I think I, in a span of a couple of weeks had to get very, comfortable with like accepting my past, my two previous surgeries that had medically failed on me, um, and coming to terms with those before I could even consider bariatric surgery. Yeah. Um, because that was one, like my mom had kind of slipped over like, Hey, I found this surgeon <laughs> don't have to say yes or no right now. Just wanted to put this out there. Um, and I kind of just took that as a sign. It was, you know, maybe two weeks after my grandma's funeral that she had sent that to me. And it just felt like the right 
time. It was COVID. I had, I was unemployed. Like what better time to change your life than like during a pandemic, I guess. I don't know. Yes. Um, well, yeah. And now as you're, as you're, as you're recapping, you know, a, a piece of your story, it really just dawned on me. Like we, we are very familiar with our story up to surgery because mm-hmm. we, we are living that, that life that we kind of dread every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And there are pieces that happen in, in every day that, that lead up, that lead up to that. Mm-hmm. And right. Like I always think, you know, there, there are two chapters of my life. There's multiple chapters of my life, but when it comes to my, my book on obesity, right. There's, there's the before, and then there's the after. And while the story continues to change that past doesn't, but you're going to be looking at it through different lenses, the further you get out from surgery, Mm -hmm. right? Like the, the realization of like, oh yeah, no, I remember that was the last time I fit into gap clothing. Oh no, I remember how I felt being a little bit ashamed that I could only wear a men's North face jacket, right? Like you really, it, it, when you look back on your stories, you realize just how impactful your weight was all those years, Mm -hmm. but you were that warrior. You were that person. You were that fighter that was just like, I know there's something different for me. And I think that different is better. I just can't understand a life that is free from all of this, like burden of weight. Yeah. Yeah. And as you're, you spoke just now, I even remember, you know, my whole life, like between you know, being 350 pounds at age 15 to getting my lap band to having it fail, like, like all of these moments being like, why me? Why is this happening? Like, yeah, what is going on? Why me? Why is this happening over and over and over again, being a, that thought in my head. Yeah. Um, and then also living my life thinking, man, I just really want to make a difference. I don't know how, like I tried being a teacher did not like it. I'm not, I'm not a teacher at heart. Um, you know, trying other, I wanted to be a psychiatrist, like just how can I help people? And then Mm -hmm. in that moment, when I, you know, started my Instagram, I was like, Oh, this is how I do it. Like, this is how I help people. Yeah. And it was because of my past. It was because of that before. Yeah that I can do that for people. And so I think that's also when we're remembering our stories and and getting real with our stories, it can bring you some, some enlightenment of your own life path, (laughs) I guess. Yes. Yes. Well, and and I really felt, I mean, I really found that when, when we did the event with Barry Dyers, you know, for me going back and looking at some of those pictures, I've seen some of those pictures before, but then when you're looking at it through the lens of how has my obesity, how has my disease of obesity impacted my life, right? From a very early age, from the very beginning. And to be able to unpack that was like, it, it, it was difficult, but at the same time, it, it was cathartic because by going back and revisiting my stories that I thought were closed, you know, opening it back up, it's, it is scary and it brings up some things that are not so great right like it it wasn't necessarily a joyful experience but what I'm learning about that is is the impact that my weight has had on that first chapter of my life and rectifying my weight is still impacting my life moving forward right obesity is the is the continual thing throughout that and I might not be an obese person anymore physically right but that is still impacting me up here. So those stories are actually helping me unpack the, the, the mental work that I need to do as a bariatric patient to rectify those two. But that also is like ammunition that I can use every single day as I'm battling obesity. It's like, no, I remember what that felt like. I remember what that moment was like. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't in touch with my story for myself, I don't have that tool that I can use. So while it was really scary to go back there and look at that, oh man, is it, is it a tool that is just continuing to, to work for me? 
Right. Well, it also, just... it also allows you to understand more about why things were how they were yeah. and how you coped with and how. So it's not that you're getting to rewrite your story, but you're definitely getting to go back and make some edits to it and understand it a whole lot better. So it's like, yes. it's almost like getting an outline after the fact. So you, you go oh. your story, then you get an outline, you go back and go, oh, well, shit, nobody told me that part. Like, now, now I get it. Like, it all makes yes. sense why I did this that led to this yes. that led to that. And so, you know, like you said, it's helping you build your toolbox for what happens when that happens yeah. again, because we're so cyclical in the way that, you know, those things are going to happen again. Some of those things that, that happened in life are going to come up again. And mm -hmm. you've got to be able to deal with it in a new way by yeah. understanding how you dealt with it the old way so that you don't repeat the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. It's like the, it's like the same book, but multiple editions, right? It's like the author just continues to put up these updated versions. And that's kind of what I feel like this is, right? It's just an updated version. It's a deeper understanding. It's a different understanding, uh, but it's, it's a tool that I could use. And I wanted to avoid this tool. <laughs> you guys know, at all costs. I was like, there is no freaking way I am doing any of this. And, and where I've landed is that I, you know, I'm okay with, with publicly sharing a, a big chunk of my story. But what I've also come to understand are there are parts of my story that I don't have to share with anyone, mm -mm. right? The world is not owed my story, but I am owed it. Yeah, I am owed it. And I can go back and I can revisit my story and I can have pieces of my story that are just there for me. And that's okay. Because if I don't own it for myself, it's not going to do the, the only person who, who, who needs it is me. Mm -hmm. That's it. And if I get comfortable with my story, if I own my story, if I understand all of those facets, there might come a time where I'm okay with giving my story publicly because I know that it's going to help somebody. But if I don't even spend the time to really understand what that is for me, then it's not going to do any good for anybody else anyways. And, and knowing and accepting that it's not going to be this comfortable, warm and fuzzy feeling like it is really hard and like emotions are felt <laughs> and allowing yourself to dig deeper is one of the best gift, gifts and tools yeah. that you can give yourself. Um, I, that's something that I struggled with too, you know, just like April, it's like, I don't want to think about how I felt that one day that, I, you know, we all have those days, right. Where we're like, man, that really sucked. I'm just like, not going to think about that forever again. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are the moments that we have to revisit and we have to heal and we have to accept that that happened like yes. sitting in a pot of preheating boiling water you can sit there for a little bit but that heat's gonna get too hot eventually you got to know where to jump out you can always come back to it but yeah. you can't i mean if you can you can stay the longer you can stay in the uncomfortable moments the better off you're going to be because it's that's where the work's done like you've got to understand some of that stuff like april said you don't always have to share it but you have to understand it and you know, it's, it's the, the, just a, a, a second part of that tough conversation that you have to have with yourself. But you know, as we all do, tough conversations, while they may suck, you can get through it because we've got through it and gotten as far as we've gotten up to this point. Yeah. And I was just amazed too, you know, like having to publicly say like, oh, I remember that was the last time I could fit in Gap clothing. Right. But then I couldn't believe it because after that event, I got so many messages from people that were like, oh, my God, I remember that, too. That happened to me. I thought that I was the only one, you know, like all, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, OK, like I, I was holding a lot of shame onto this moment mm -hmm. that that didn't belong there. Right. Yeah. It, it, and and if, if we can get to that point where we can start to share these little pieces of our story, I think we're going to find that, oh, well, I'm not alone, right? This isn't just me. This isn't a me thing. This is an obesity thing. And look at all of these people who are battling the same disease that I am. Oh, okay. Like I can do this. I can work through these things. We're really good at accepting blame for things that may or may not be our fault. Like we'll just, we'll ah. heap it on ourselves and just go, oh no, I'm going to own that. I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and take all this shit that may or may not be mine. And it's just going to be mine. And I'm just going to hold real tight onto it for a really long time. Like there's people I talk to in the community that I have to tell, like that, you know, when they say certain things and I'll be like, 
but you realize you're taking ownership of something that's not even yours. Like yeah. you're not even taking like it's not that you have your own trash to take out, like we all do, but you're holding on to somebody else's trash. Like it's not even mm-hmm. your bag. Like that's yeah. even at the airport, they tell you don't touch anybody else's bag. Leave that shit where it sits. It's not for you. Like, why would you blame yourself for something that you couldn't have, that there was n- literally no way you could have prevented, helped with, gotten somebody else out of? Like, there are just yeah. certain things that those, that, that it's not you. Yeah. yeah. So, right, we've got a lot of questions recently about people reaching out saying like, well, how, how do I start? Like, how do I start sharing my story? That's, I think, the number one question that, that we get. And I just think that the three of us advocate for, before you even think about sharing your story publicly, you need to acknowledge and own your story privately. Yep. So how do you guys recommend, how, how do people do that? How do, how do we own and acknowledge our story privately? Where do we start? I think it depends on the person, first of all. I think we all process things very differently. Um, mm-hmm. For myself, it was therapy. Uh, I went to therapy uh, for about a year prior to even thinking about having surgery. And um, that was a point where I could start verbalizing my story in a way that was still private. (laughs) I was still with a therapist who like legally could not share my stories. Um, and I think I'm a very verbal processor as Jason and April know, I have to like talk things out to really understand what's going on. And so therapy for me was top notch, the thing that really helped me. Um, but also, um, journaling, uh, even just taking a couple, like a couple minutes every single day. Um, I started doing that during my pre-op process that really helped me. Um, because as we all know, going through all of these life changes, these food changes brings up a lot of emotions. And so being able to have a journal where I could just say, I feel really frustrated or I feel really sad and I don't know why. And then you can kind of sit and just like word vomit things out on paper. Um, that also helped me process and kind of accept my story. Yeah. I know I, uh, I was, you know, I, I had experienced something in my life and it was really difficult for me to, to get through and acknowledging that that was a part of my life, uh, what was helpful, but what I really had to do is I had to, I had to get to a place where I, you know, I, I didn't need to forgive or any, you know, f- this person for for what they had done for me but what my therapist helped me understand is that could you at least get to a place where you understand or understood why that person did what they did right so it wasn't like you don't have to forgive me you don't have to do any of that but could you at least get to the point where you could imagine a situation that makes sense that their actions make sense and i was like oh oh okay so you're not at oh oh that was helpful. That actually helped me add a piece to my own story that I was missing, right? The the other person's perspective. Not that it excused the behavior, that what happened, none of that. It was just saying, okay, is there a reality in which I can understand that? I needed that for, for my own story. It, it, was, it was a big help. And then just like, I can't believe how powerful it's been just to go back and look at these old pictures that I've seen maybe a million times before. But to look at them through the lens of my own story, my own obesity, right? Like how did that impact me was huge. And that's just a conversation I'm having with myself. Who would have thought that was, that was something I could do. Yeah. Well, and and it really boils down to starting with just stripping everything away, getting raw, getting real. And just from a from a self perspective, you have to get introspective to be able to know exactly like what you had said, which pieces you want to give out, which pieces you want to keep for yourself. If you're good sharing the whole thing, share the whole thing. That's fantastic. But you have to you have to write the rough draft with yourself. Sit alone and say, this is this is the book I'm going to publish. This is what I want to put out to the world 
and maybe you've got a couple of drafts that have pages you're not putting out. That's fine. That shit stays on the back shelf. Only you read that. That's that's mm-hmm. the you know that's the director's cut. You don't have to put that out. Yeah. So otherwise, if you you know find out that you feel comfortable as time goes on releasing more of your story, you have that option. But you have to start with yourself and being as honest as you can with yourself to know not only this is what happened, but I may know a little bit of why. This is what I was feeling. This is how I got here. Then you just, you know, once you've told yourself enough times where you feel comfortable with it, then you start letting it out. And it doesn't have to be a word vomit all at one time where you just tell everybody, okay, starting back in 1987, and then you, you know, you go from, you know, up to now. You could just start telling people exactly what you want to tell people because you yeah. are the author of your story. You get to tell them whatever you want. And you, you know, you can't tell them what the ending was like because guess what? You're not there yet. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not going to jump all the way to the the, the final chapter because we're not writing that shit yet. It's not time. Yeah. So you can go through, you know, what you did pre-op up until now, and talk about how you're making it through right now. And yeah. there's going to be somebody out there that needs to hear your version of that story for it to make sense to them and reconcile the fact of where they are right now or where they want to be. And so you're going to help somebody else come along in their journey. And you may not even know it. They may not ever even reach out to you and say, hey, guess what? You helped me in such and such a way. You may not ever receive that. Or you may be lucky as April, Natalie, and myself have received it in an abundance of those messages. And that's what keeps us coming back to doing this is because we know it is so important. So like I said, there may be people out there that you never hear that from, but just trust me, they're out there. Somebody is watching and somebody's going to get a piece of the recipe they need from your story. Yeah. You know, and I, I think the fear for me, uh, the fear of going back and really understanding my story, I know requires me to become emotional. And you guys know that is not my, you know, it, it makes it's it's emotions. Favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's absolutely not. You know, and the the running joke is that like I don't have tear ducts. Like I just I just wasn't born with them. And and there have been moments in my life where I, I am emotional, but I'm just not wired that way. No. And I thought that there was something wrong with me. I've come to understand through sharing my story that it isn't anything wrong with me. But I'm I I don't like to show emotion, uh, and I don't like to feel emotion. But giving myself permission to experience emotions privately has allowed me to understand that that was actually what was needed for me to move on, right? That, that, that feeling that emotion was not an indicator that I was a bad person or that I'm not a strong person or any of those things. It's that sometimes I have to move through those emotions. I have to feel those emotions to get on the other side to that discovery. And I just didn't know that I could do it privately, right? So like mm-hmm. sometimes just having the knowledge of like, hey, you could be, you could be very similar to me. You have the right and you have the space to move through your emotions totally privately, separately from anyone else. And just because you're not sharing that publicly doesn't mean it's not valid, right? right. So you know, I just hope that everybody understands that you moving through these things privately is just as important as you doing so publicly, right? Mm -hmm. And that we don't have to, we don't have to worry about what we're projecting publicly, because again, it's, the world isn't owed that. You owe yourself that privacy and that time to move through them just for you. You are enough. You are, you are that valuable to do it privately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, like you're the only one who really needs to know the story at the end of the day. Um, but also realizing that maybe sharing your story could also be very healing is also okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah, with, and with April and the personal emotion thing, it's kind of that if the if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around, does it make a sound? <laughs> you can be emotional by yourself, yeah. and it's still valid. You don't have to yeah. show your emotion to anyone else for it to be valid or not valid. Yeah. So sit in those emotions, process through them, yeah. 
at your pace. When you're ready, you can then move forward. The bus doesn't leave without you because you're driving. So yes. Yep. Yeah. Emotions are so funny too, because I actually am very similar to April in the sense that I don't like crying. I don't like it. I really, I don't think anyone likes it, but I really hate getting <laughs> emotional. I am an emotional person though. And so I think years of me like stuffing it down and mm-hmm. like not letting myself be emotional was coming across as being rude or like snippy. Yeah. It was coming out in other ways that were not healthy. And so now I joke with myself that the uh like the dam has been broken. So now it's like I give myself if I feel like I'm going to cry, I'm just going to freaking cry. I don't care where I am, who I'm with, if I'm, you know, on the bus or if I'm like by myself, it doesn't matter. Um, and that to me has also been very empowering and also helped me own more of my story. Cause I'm like, I'm really frustrated right now and I'm going to cry and I'm just going to like, let myself be frustrated and cry. And then once I'm done, I can move on. Yes. Yep. That's actually one of the things I instilled in my son when he was young, because he's a, he's a very super emotional person, always has been super emotional. And when he was young, he would just kind of sit around. He would have those times. He would just cry. He'd be like, I just need to cry. And I'm like, so cry. Like, what are you worried about? Like, do it. He'd crawl up in my lap. He'd put his head on my shoulder. And he would just cry. And as he got older, he would just say, be like, hey, I, I need time to cry. I'd be like, cool, go do, go do what you got to do. Like when he didn't want to lay in my lap and cry anymore, <laughs> now he just go to his room or whatever and do what he's got to do. But I, yeah. I, I was not ever robbed of having the ability to show emotion when I was young. So I didn't want to take that from him. I wanted to instill it in him that there was, that it was okay, especially from the male perspective that it's okay to be emo- to, to show the emotion to cry to do whatever you need to do because so yeah. it's so different for men usually when it comes to the emotion side of things like we're not mm-hmm. we're told we're not told it's okay you know to do that you know when we're little yeah. it's cool but you know then we gotta dust you know dust ourselves off rub some dirt on it you're okay walk it off all that kind of stuff that you get when you're little and I wanted him to know that it was okay for those emotions to show themselves and for him to process through it correctly. And so that's kind of why I kind of nudged him that way. I've uh, I've been very fortunate. I I have lived on like the rainbow of emotions, right? When I was little, when we were growing up, it was very much a no. We don't show emotion. This is what we do. We move through life this way. Like no, 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 no. Right? Like and if there's something, then we'll deal with it privately. But publicly, no. And thank God, my parents are very open to acknowledging like something is not working yeah. and we need to, we need to fix this. And, you know, my, we, I, we were in family therapy for a, wow. a decade. I want to say like the four of us went and then we all saw the same person independently, you know, like it was because they, my, my family just got to a point where it, 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 something broke. Yeah. And instead of just going, well, this isn't going to be fixed my, both of my parents said, okay, we have to fix this. What tools do we need? And turns out emotion, showing emotion, naming our emotions, identifying them, digging a little deeper, uh, was a part of that education that we all received. Uh, so I got to experience both. And and I also got to live that, that opening of the tool Mm -hmm. of emotion, from a lot of different perspectives and there were thousands of very uncomfortable difficult gut-wrenching am i going to survive these moments that i experienced as an individual and my family experienced mm-hmm. you know as a as a family unit but having the tools and knowing that i can name an emotion or if i can't name an emotion i can at least start with like what, what you said not like i'm just feeling Ugh, yeah right And then to have the skills to go, okay, but why am I feeling that way? What Mm -hmm. am I actually feeling? Oh, I'm actually feeling ashamed or I'm feeling like I was not valued or, oh, well, that's very different than this. Yeah. But again, like that is our story. I I think it's so difficult to really like, you know, when people say like, share your story or know your story, what does that mean? It means that you can look back or you can in the moment go, what am I feeling? Why am I experiencing this? How did it get here? 
do I want to continue to feel this? And if not, what's my path forward? Mm -hmm. That's your story. Your story is your emotion. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because I know for me, like anger is the, the, the first emotion I'll pull up because it's the first one I could let go of. So it's easy for me to grab a hold of that instead of being super emotional one way or the other, because I could get angry and then I could just let it go once I finally figure out what's what. But if we don't have time or don't feel like processing it, anger comes first, then you can put that back in the box and just save it for another day, save it for another time. And because you can't really, you can't really make a, 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 a thought process between the anger or shame because the shame never really goes away. That's always there. It's mm-hmm. just underlying and just waiting to kind of stick up and go, you're going to mess up there. Dun, dun. And you kind of go through that whole situation. But yeah, for me, it, it's one of those things that, that the anger usually comes first because it's the quickest I can grab a hold of and then put back in the box if I need to. Yeah. Well, and you bring up a really good point about like what, what is, what is top of mind for, for everybody? Like we, we all have that go-to emotion. We all have that go-to, right? And I think for a lot of us, when we look back at our stories or when we try to identify our stories, that top of that, that emotion at the very top grabs us and we just think, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't go any, eh, eh, no. But if we've never pushed beyond that to find out what is just a few moments beyond that or a few minutes, we just don't know what we don't know until we try it. And learning to understand our story from our own perspective for us is how we toe dip into understanding what's on the other side of that for us. Mm -hmm. So the, the other thing that people always ask us, well, it's kind of aligned to this is how do I start to share my story? And what they're asking is how do I start to share my story publicly? Right. And that's also a difficult one because you're the only person that's going to know what you are comfortable with doing so publicly. Because the other thing that we know is that as soon as you share your story publicly, you're opening yourself up to you fill in the judgment, yeah, questions, questions, all the things. Opinions. All the things. All yes, of opinions. Yeah, all of it. Right. So I think the question that we all have to ask ourselves before we start to share it publicly is Am I prepared for? what could be coming my way. And if you are not prepared for that, then maybe you need to spend some more time really thinking about what could be coming and how are you going to react? Because if you're sharing your story for maybe reasons that aren't helpful to you, these, these are going to be really detrimental, right? Though. Yeah. I I remember when I got my first like pushback, comment Mm. and I remember like obviously I'm being vulnerable right like I'm sharing a part of my story and I got this like not so nice comment and I remember my first emotion right was just mine is always is frustrated I get frustrated and uh because I feel stuck because I'm like I could rip this person's head off right now (laughs) or I could cry. Like those are my only two like options in my immediate thoughts. And I remember having one of those comments and going through those emotions of like, what do I do? Because I don't want to look like a jerk, but also like this person is being a jerk Mm -hmm. and you know, you have to sort through it. But I remember thinking like, I'm not ready for this. I don't think I'm ever going to be ready for this. Um, and I think something like my dad has told me is like, you have to remove people's opinions are not really about you. Right. Like they're about themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you can accept, if you can like shift your brain into thinking that way, sharing your story, you know, when you get negative feedback or um, anything like that. That's always my first thought is like, okay, this isn't really about me. Mm-hmm. And then like what April said, okay, how, what are they experiencing in their life right now? Like how, what are some options that they could be going, things that they could be going through to make them write this comment? And if you can have those two things in your arsenal, I think that's where you can start sharing your story. 
Absolutely. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah told me a very, very amazing thing that stuck with me about that same type of deal. Like other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Like it just doesn't, like it does, it's, it makes no difference. Like whatever they think, it's not about you, what they think of you. Like you keep it moving. It doesn't impact your day one way or the other. That you, you, you are who you are. You're not going to stop being who you are and just keep it moving. Like it's not, and that to me, was was huge when I thought about that because I used to really be like super involved and cared about everybody and their what they were going to think, what they were going to say, how mm -hmm. I was going to look, you know. And I just, you know, when that that was kind of mind blowing for me when she when she pulled that one out. So that was a that was a big step towards me finally doing it. But you know, sharing your story is not going to look the same for everyone. So however you feel is comfortable, you may not be a person that gets on stories every day and tells people from sunup to sundown how your day went. That may not be for you. Mm -hmm. So don't try, I mean, try and see if you decide you don't like it, move on to the next one. Like you can try other things just like you try things in, you know, it, it's all going to be just getting in the dressing room, trying it on. Yeah. Try to post, you know, on your feed. If you, you get, you like the reactions you're getting, you think that's cool, you go ahead and do that. Like there may not be, you may decide to jump on YouTube and start a whole video blog series. Like do that, like whatever works for you. Just know yeah. that getting your story out there is what is important to the community as a whole. It is, right? That's kind of one of our only tools that we have to change people's opinions, right? To, to end the stigma of bariatric surgery is we have to be the voices that are shouting louder than the voices of the naysayers, right? And the do it naturally and oh, you can do it on your own or this is the easy way out, right? All that stuff. If we don't have voices that are equal to that coming in, then we're never really sharing the truth, which is that bariatric surgery is a medical tool that many people can access to find and maintain a happy, healthy weight, right? That's all we're trying to say. We're just trying to counter that. And we understand that not everybody can do that and that's okay. But if you get to the point where you can, just know that you're adding your very strong voice to a very strong community that's only growing in size and an ability to, to impact change. And you just being a member of the community in the shadows and on the sidelines is helping with that. So no matter what you do, you're helping. There's different levels that 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 people can help and participate at. And if you want to choose to 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 do so at a different level, awesome, right? You you can do that. And, and I think what's re what's really helped me share my story along this journey is kind of what you guys are all talking about, right? You guys know I'm not a religious person, not biblical in any sense of the word. But I think a theme that comes up in Christianity is like, judge not, right? Like, we're not here to judge others. And when I see those nasty comments that come in on things that I've shared or what other people share, I, I instantly, my biggest fear is like, I don't want to be seen as an, as an idiot, right? Like, I'm a smart person. I don't want to ever portray that, that, that I'm not. And so that's my first worry. But I've been able to step back from that many times and go, well, they're passing judgment. I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm not sharing anything in a way that is, I'm not judging anyone. I'm simply saying, hey, I encountered this problem. Here's how I solved it. Or I'm experiencing this problem. How would you solve it? I'm never presenting anything in a way that judges others. And if people want to come at me with their judgment, that's actually, that, that's not me. That, that's not what I'm about. That's not what anything I share about. So I can very just quickly go, oh, you just don't understand what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. It's, it's my job to attempt to continue to do that. But if you just come at me with this negativity, you're not actually taking the time to understand me at all. So then why would I take the time to understand you? Because you're here to judge people. I'm not here for that. Our values are not aligned. And guess what? I don't have to spend any energy on people that don't align with my values. Yeah. Yeah. I think people don't realize or forget. I don't know what the deal is, but like it, I'm using Instagram as the example. If someone is like not aligning with you and your values, there's a unfollow button. There's a block button. There's if they're really nasty, there's a, a report button. 
Mm-hmm. Like you do not have to, and that's the thing I tell people a lot is you do not have to take that. That is not, you can put it right back on them, block them, mute them, whatever you feel comfortable with, but that's not yours. Like what Jason was saying earlier, that's not your garbage. That's not your baggage. Yeah. That's theirs. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have, we, we no longer have to be the fixers. We don't have to fix and help all the others and bring them along with us. And there's going to be some people that don't want to come along on the journey and they need to stay behind, but you got to keep going. You know, and, and people's fears are valid about like, you know, you, you discover this amazing community, you want to be a part of it, right? There is that like, oh, like I finally found this place where I can feel like I belong. And then every now and then you're going to run up to people that's like, oh, well, I thought we were all in the same community, but that part of your journey doesn't align with mine. But there's this fear of missing out on the greater community. And, and that's real and, and that's valid, right? We, we all want to feel like we belong. We all want to belong, period. And it does take a lot of strength to be able to step back and go, I want to belong to a community, but, but this person doesn't align with my values. It takes a lot of strength to go, I don't have to be friends with that person or I don't have to know that person. I don't need to interact with that person. And I'm still gonna be okay because there are people that are just like me. Mm -hmm. There's a fear that we're not going to find this group again, but we ourselves are a group. And if we live our values truthfully and honestly and authentically, the community will always be there. Your people will always be there because like-minded people are drawn to like-minded people. Mm -hmm. That's just how humans are wired. So, right. Like I understand there's a fear of feeling like, oh, I'm not going to fit in. But if you authentically show up in the world as you, you will find your people. Your people will find you. Yeah. That's just what happens. Yeah. We're right. living proof. Yeah. <laughs> we, <Quite> are. <laughs> we are quite livingly, yes, we, 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 are, we are living proof of that. You know, yeah. and I always just tell people, people ask me all the time, well, how do I start sharing my story? I think you, you, you have to identify what is driving your desire to share your story right? What, why do you want to share it? And once you get good with that, why create content for no, for lack of a better word, but your story is your content, right? Mm -hmm. So create content that is aligned to that. Why to that value? Do you want to help people? Do you want to, do you want to help dispel myths? Like, do do you want to just practice sharing your story? Like what is the reason that, that you want to share and then focus on sharing that and if you share something and let's say you don't get great feedback from the community or engagement, it's an opportunity for you to go, okay, well, do I want to continue to share this or do I want to try something different? And then again, that conversation, am I, am I sharing something just to share? Am I sharing something for likes or I'm sharing something to truly help me? Mm -hmm. And when we've all experienced this, all, all three of us have been like, why am I doing this? Why am I sharing this? Like, am I just doing this for the likes? Do people even care? right? Those moments are moments for you to take a step back and reflect and, and really connect with your why again, to connect with your story. And those answers will tell you, I want to keep sharing, or I don't want to keep sharing, or I want to only share this part, or I want to actually do this, right? Like instead of thinking those of moments, of like, oh, I failed. No, that's a moment for you to say, I've just wandered a little bit from my goal. I've wandered from my why And I can take this opportunity to reconnect with it and then make a path forward that's good for you. Because if you want to share for reasons that aren't healthy for you, I don't think it's the right time for you to start sharing. Yeah. And I I also want to, because this, I did not have all of this figured out when I started posting. I knew I wanted to post and share. So I did. Like I, I didn't have all of that would be, that would have been wonderful for me to all have at that time. Didn't have it yeah. at all. And I also just want to say, like, if you just feel like pulled to share, just share, like just share, like, it doesn't matter what you're sharing. doesn't matter how often you share. Um, uh, in, in the words of Sam, uh, bariatric chef Boyer D it's not that deep. <laughs> It's no, not. you don't have to have a blueprint. 
just put it out there and if people gravitate towards it cool if you feel like you've started sharing it you don't want to share anymore stop yep yeah yeah it's just yeah i mean i literally just shared for myself to be like hey i need to be accountable and i don't know what my i mean if you scroll all the way back on all of my posts they're a mishmash of everything Mm-hmm. And I just shared what I wanted to share in the moment. And it brought me this amazing community of people just by kind of ripping the band aid and just doing it. So I think there's two like, if you're like, man, I can't just rip off the band aid, then yeah, sit with yourself and think, man, why am I sharing? Why, you know, what do, what am I here for? What's my purpose? Mm-hmm. But also, if you just feel like, I want to, sh- I keep getting pulled and like have this desire to share, just do it. Yeah, just do it because you can always adjust as you go. It's yep. just like our bariatric journey. We just ripped the bandaid off. I mean, I-, I thought I was very well prepared for this. Turns out not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Right? Exactly. Right. There's what you think is going to happen. And then there's actually what happens. And yeah. no matter how much planning you do, you're going to make adjustments as you go. Things are going to be different. It's not going to appear the way, right. That, that you think it is. And that's okay. Like nothing in life very rarely, right. Is actually as we think it is. And I love the fact Natalie, that you want to call that to attention. If you feel called, if you think that you're ready to share, then just start doing it and make adjustments as you go or pause or stop, or you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know the power of sharing our stories because we've experienced some very positive things. We know that some of you have shared parts of your story and not so positive things have come out of it. It's a crapshoot. It really is. But if you have that desire within you, maybe it's time to start trying baby Mm -hmm. step, toe dip, try something. Uh, And hopefully by listening or watching this episode, you have some new ideas on how you can start to own and acknowledge and share your own story. Because we know you got a lot of power in your own story. Yes. Well, my friends, shall we do a little housekeeping, Miss Nat? Yeah. Well, um, I handle a very special segment on our grid called the shout out Sundays and shout out Sundays are our favorite day of the week um, because we get to highlight you guys, our wonderful bariatric community on Instagram. Um, there's 16,000 of you now. Um, so if you have not signed up yet, we've only scratched the surface. So mm-hmm. um, all you have to do is go to the link in our bio. Uh, there's a Google form for you to fill out. You'll just um, answer some questions about you, your journey, uh, your ups, your downs, your proudest moments, your favorite bariatric snacks, because we are all about the snacks here and uh, upload a photo of yourself. One that you're proud of. It does not have to be a before or after an after picture. Um, it can just be one that you feel represents you. Um, it can be for pre-op, post-op, um, freshly post-op, 15 years post-op. It does not matter um, what stage you're in. Um, we just want to highlight you and share your story. That could also be a way for you to start sharing your story. Oh, I never even thought oh, about that, okay. but yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and then um, you fill out that form. I get it on the grid every single Sunday. We get to highlight one of you and um, it just brings our amazing bariatric community just a little bit closer. It's uh, also my favorite, it's all of our favorite day, right? It's an opportunity for us to get to know all of our friends and family, our community members on a different level. And it is a safe place to start sharing your story if you just don't know where, where to go. And it's free. You don't have to be a paid member of the community. You don't have no. to pay us. Nope. You don't pay us. We don't pay you. There's no pay. No, no, no. It is just, it is simply a platform for us to shout you out for all of the hard work that you are doing along your bariatric journey. Yeah. It literally is what it is. Yes. No, no. <laughs> We're very transparent here on bariatric. <laughs> this is true. 
And if you guys are looking for an additional layer of support, we do have a membership community. We partner with over 20 experts. And by experts, I'm talking about bariatric therapists, certified personal trainers, registered dietitians, wellness coaches, right? Even RNs, doctors, right? These people provide supports, meetups, live classes, activities, events, all these kinds of great things, uh, all in the digital world. So all at your fingertips because it's all on your phone. Uh, so I, we highly recommend that you check it out. Just go to www.barrynation.com to learn more about our membership community. Whew. All right. Housekeeping done. Jason, my friend, you want to take us out? Yes, man. We want to thank you guys so much for all the support, the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the reviews that you've left. Uh, you can still leave us reviews on your favorite podcast player. You can actually leave us voice messages on the Anchor app that we can incorporate into future episodes because we love hearing from you guys because it's mm-hmm. it's always just such a, amazing things you guys leave us in these messages. So we appreciate that very much. You can also leave us ratings and reviews on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you haven't subscribed there, go ahead and do that. So you'll always notified when we make new or when we upload new videos. And just remember at the end of the day that you've got this, we've got you and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks friends. Bye. Bye-bye.